Robin, thank you very much indeed. A quick look at whether the sun is out at Top of the morning to you, ladies and gentlemen. A bright, brisk morning. It's cold. I was out of the house this morning at 6.30. Very cold. Smoking the Boswell Bent Billiard. Really lovely pipe, delightful pipe. It was a very good pipe before and it's now superb as a result of its conversion to 9mm by uh, Marco of Moretti Pipes. He changed the stem and um, it really has completely, I won't say completely changed, but it's made a huge difference. And it's just um, the balance seems to be so much better. As I mentioned in the previous video, understanding when to lengthen the stem and when to shorten the stem in order to give you the right balance is a, is a mark of a true craftsman who understands his, his trade. And that's what Marco's done. On, on the other Boswell, the freehand Dublin, he shortened the stem and on this one he lengthened it. And on both, he's improved the balance no end. Um, if you watch the videos that he's put out on how he makes a pipe, you can see how skilled he is. And that's only through making thousands of pipes. You know, he virtually does every pipe freehand. Um, the vast majority of his pipes are freehand. Um, the mortar pipe that I've got, I mean that one is a completely round billiard, a tall billiard. And I'm not sure if he used the lathe for that or not. I haven't actually seen any clips of him doing round bowls by hand. I think it would be really hard to do that to, to that level of perfection. But uh, maybe he can. I don't know. Certainly one of the greats, and if you're uh, looking for a new pipe at a fair price, I would definitely encourage you to look him up. He sells his uh, pipes on eBay. Um, I think it's called Bima 89 something, I can't remember. Um, but if you search Moretti pipes, I'm sure they'll come up on eBay. This morning I'm smoking some Northwoods. Nathaniel, welcome to the club. I see you uh, enjoyed some Northwoods and some uh, countryside from Boswell. And indeed, they are very, very good. Northwoods is a bit sweeter, a bit more aromatic, I think, than countryside. Countryside is probably a more purer English blend. And there is an argument about whether you can consider Northwoods an aromatic or not. But I think that the Latakia um, is present enough and it makes the blend similar enough to lots of, lots of English blends to still call it an English blend. Yes, there are some aromatics in there, but you know, it doesn't take away from the fact that it's a classic English blend or a Balkan even.
Got a busy day ahead. Got to take the wife to hospital a bit later on to get her knee checked again. And this evening I have a, a job. So it's uh, all go today. Ten minutes where I'm not homophobic or racist, <laughs> so I can give it a go. So yeah, I, I, I think it's it. I think I know. So, so you're just to be able to clear, but yes. you adapted your performance, your whole gig. Yeah. To but, accommodate that. Well, I didn't need to adapt my 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 performance because I I, I don't do that. But that, that, that no no. Well, let, but let's assume you don't do, let's say homophobia. For yeah. instance, which which obviously is offensive to everybody. Yeah. I mean, what what about all the other things? Because there is rather a long list here, isn't there? But you I mean, see, I, I, yeah, I, I know I sound like a, a very right-on person, but it's just I'm very self-involved and just write about myself. Ah. So there's not much trans... That was um, Radio 4, talking about some comedians who were going to do a set at a university and were asked to sign a uh, contract where um, they agreed not to talk about a whole long list of topics. And one of the uh, comedians withdrew and said that political correctness gone mad. It's an interesting topic. I'm not fully made up myself where I stand on it. many times when I've uh, seen or heard a comedy program which some could classify as anti-semitic but I haven't been bothered by it. Um, it depends on the format, it depends on the forum. You know if a comedian gets on and only makes racist jokes then obviously that would be very distasteful and illegal. But where it's, when you look at the, when it's in context and some people would argue that there's no context that would allow room for racism. But I think that a joke about a particular culture or religion is not necessarily racist if it's not coming from a racist person. If you go back in time, 20 years, I'm not talking about going back 100 years, you know, even 10 or 20 years, the basis for many comedians' career was based on laughing at other people. I mean, that's. You know, you can take um, you can take comedy and make it satiristic about whatever's going on, and make it topical, and you can have a laugh at uh, the news, but that will make you quite one-dimensional. Um, it doesn't leave you much to talk about if you're going to be completely politically correct. It doesn't leave you much to have a laugh about. And where does it leave? A Jewish comedian making fun of Jewish people, his own culture, is he allowed to do that? And I know there was, um, there was a court case a while back, going back a few years, I think it was here in the UK, I'm not entirely sure, there was a case about um, somebody had accused somebody else of being racist and he was acquitted because he himself was, I think it was the, a Jewish person or a, whichever religion was, he was acquitted because he himself was a member of that religion, could hardly be accused of being racist. I think it's a very emotive but very interesting topic. I'll give an example, take Billy Connolly. If he were to sort of take the mickey out of Scottish people, would he be being xenophobic? Or Graham Norton, would he be homophobic if he talked about gay people and made fun of them? You know, a lot of, a big part of humor is self-deprecation. Um, people who, are, who take a dig at themselves or at their own culture 
that's a big part of humor. Does that automatically preclude everybody else from using the same humor, even though they're not of that same culture? I'm not sure. I think that um, political correctness is bleeding, it, sorry, is breeding, it's bleeding as well, but it's breeding generations of weaklings, generations of wafer-thin people, uh, skinned people, no backbone, no ability to deal with society and its challenges. Yes, you can try and remove the challenges so they don't have to deal with it, but you're not doing them any good service. Doing, I think they're doing a disservice. People have to. The same as I said yesterday, everything has to be reasonable and striking the right balance, and that's not always easy. I'm not saying one should be racist. I'm not saying one should be homophobic or xenophobic. Obviously not. But it's about striking the right the right balance. And being contextually considerate. You know, if you, see, if you go to a comedian and, and he's, you know, 5% of his act is perhaps having a dig at a particular culture, as long as it's not done in a way which is racially motivated and trying to stoke up racist attitude, I don't think I'd have a problem with it. I don't think, I'm not sure, I don't think I'd have a problem with it. I watch a lot of uh, American comedians, and a lot of it is is based around um, having a laugh at Jewish, the Jewish religion, at Islam, and various other religions. You know, people talk about the Mexicans and things like that, which I don't know anything about the Mexicans. I've got nothing to laugh about them. I don't know anything about them, but it, cer it, it certainly seems to be a part of the comedy culture. Um, <coughs> talk about Mexicans, Puerto Ricans, and here it would be the Polish, the Irish, Welsh. I actually think a lot of it is, a it is done through affection. Because who is it that you actually target? It's people who are close to you. You know, in, our, in the United Kingdom, the Welsh, the Scottish, and the Irish, there are, well, they're the United Kingdom, they're part of us, they are us, we are not different in terms of nationality officially. Obviously, there's a lot of nationalistic, nationalistic um, fervor for, on, on all of those borders to become uh, independent, but um, as we stand, we are the United Kingdom, save the Republic of Ireland, of course. Um, but and therefore, when we have a dig at the Irish or the Scottish, I find that actually, it's like it's like you have a, a dig at your mates. You know, when you when you're going out with your mates and you're going out for a drink, you know, people just dig at each other all the time, and that's how I see it. And I think that if uh, you go to a comedy club and that's what you watch, you can soon see if somebody dislikes the person that they're taking the mickey out of, or if it's done through affection. I think people should be given enough credit to be able to make their own judgments on that rather than, you know, this political correctness gone mad. As I say, I'm not completely made up either way, just uh, some musings. Um, just. I was listening to the radio that came on. I thought I'd uh, talk about it. How's that one, Chad? Does that fit the bill? I wish you all a fantastic day. It's cold, but nice and bright and sunny today. Enjoying the Latakia blends at the moment. I must say I did enjoy um, the Red Virginia, the Crumble Cake Red Virginia last night. I do recommend that. 
but it's certainly a competitive blend. In the same way as a full Virginia flake, I find it has to be, you know, com contemplated on. You've got to be relaxed and able to focus on the levels of flavors because it's quite a subtle blend, full Virginia flake. And although it's more complex than um, the crumble cake, uh, it's the same kind of um, idea in terms of how and when you would smoke it. I wouldn't smoke full, Virgi full Virginia Flake. I probably wouldn't smoke it in the car or if I was out and about. Um, but if I was at home relaxing, then yes. And I'd probably say the same with uh, the Crumble Cake Virginia. Although it's less complex and therefore you could really smoke it anywhere, anytime, any, any time of the day. I, I would say it's a very good beginner's uh, tobacco blend. If you're just new on the pipe, I would highly recommend you, you try that if you wanted to try a Virginia blend. Unless you've got a super sensitivity to tongue bite, it probably won't bite you. Um, and it's very smooth, it's not too uh, full in, in its flavours, in its richness. It's just a, a good foundation from which to grow your uh, exposure to different tobaccos and different blends. It's an excellent baseline. It looks like I've arrived at school time, so there's a school a little bit further on on the right. And uh, unless I get my timing right, I sit in the morning drop-off time, parents dropping off their kids. But it's not too bad, it goes, it moves. Anyway, um, weekend is almost here once again. I find myself, you know, it's, it's like... Uh, Groundhog Day. I feel like I'm repeating myself because the distance between each time I say it's almost the weekend seems to get shorter and shorter every week. So, as we look forward to the weekend, I wish you all a wonderful weekend. I hope the weather where you are is not too inclement. Enjoy your pipes, enjoy your smokes, enjoy your cigars, or any other way that you imbibe your tobacco. Enjoy the festive preparations. Hopefully, rush hour traffic will start to slow down now, it usually does, in the approach to Christmas and then it usually lasts until somewhere around the first week in the new year but I do and that's on the main roads I do find though in the local areas it can get a lot heavier actually as people run around rush around to uh, do their last minute shopping anyway have a great day everybody and I'll catch you on the next one look at that wonderful um, my brain ain't working this morning. Everything's in shadow. Silhouette, that's the word I was looking for. I wish I could take a picture with a pipe in the foreground now. Anywho, have a great day everybody. Catch you on the next one.